So here is a layout of my reverb unit, and here's a schematic for it. Oh, let's see here. And then yeah, these slightly other, or at least the uh, the layout. Yep. There we go. And I'm going to pass these around while I'm on the subject. This one can go over in this direction. This is just a one of the kind of circuit boards, as it were. It's just terminal strips with the components mounted on it. So what I did was take a topology, roughly speaking, of the Fender unit. I, I borrowed their zero gain clean sidechain circuit here, and then I added the, uh, the silver tone driver stage here, and spent quite a bit of time. You can see kind of different jotted down values here, and some voltages written in here and just, uh, as I was kind of playing around with different values and really kind of fine tuning the thing. Uh, another one of the things that I added here was some, some bypass caps on the, uh, this is the gain control for the reverb, and then this is the, uh, the mix control right here, and by adding a couple capacitors, it retains a little bit of high-end clarity, so even when you've got a lot of reverb, you still have some high-end clarity there. And that's basically this is the drawing that I keep on my bench when I'm building these things to remind myself that I'm hooking the wires up in the right places. And uh, boy, I can't stress enough the value of having something like this if you're building building uh, anything from scratch. It's real easy to hook things up wrong, even if you've built you know 20, 30 of these on the bench. So here's some kind of inside shots. This is the, uh, the driver stage right here. This is the back of the unit. And one of the other things that I wanted to bring to this circuit was a foot switch that controls the, uh, the reverb. And a lot of reverb units, if you're a guitar player, you might be familiar with this. But when you turn the reverb on and off, you lose the tail of the reverb. It actually shorts the reverb out to ground. And I endeavored to come up with a foot switch circuit that just kills the, uh, there it is right here, it just kills the drive to the reverb, so you still, you don't lose the tail of the delay right here. And here's the front of the unit, and for those of you who are here in December, I gave a brief description of the you know, the first control here is your mix between wet and dry, and then this is a tone control that rolls treble off of the, uh, the reverb, and then this is a gain control for the reverb. So I'll demonstrate it here for you. We're going to start adding reverb here. Check, check, check. Whoa. So we can get a spring that's going to throw up there. We can add a reverb with very thin. So I'm going to really drive the springs pretty hard. Whoa. So when the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's more. Let's use more. So I've built about, oh, I'd say about a dozen of these units and uh, sold them mostly to guitar players, although there's a few in studios here around LA. And uh, some of the folks who've recorded with them have used them on drums, keyboards, vocals. And uh, it's been a fun project for me. I, I feel as a, an amp builder, there's so many amplifiers in the world that it's, it's a little hard to make something kind of unique sounding, whereas there's really not that many reverb units. So I think uh, guitar players in particular are uh, more receptive to a reverb unit than they can be to an amplifier. And uh, I will be finally, after, gosh, let me think now, eight years of building uh, custom tube amps, kind of on a custom order basis, getting together a website this year, which has been long overdue, and uh, selling these things online. I've just so far been operating really by word of mouth and 
with all the touring that I do, it's really kept me busy when I've been at home, but I've been hankering for a reason to stay at home and just build these.